Good evening, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It's September 27th, Wednesday evening, and um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some ideas for tomorrow. Hopefully we can find another Kaifon uh, so that we can make some money here in this uh, market that's getting a little bit extended. And I have on the screen right now the daily chart of the S and, uh, I'm sorry, the semiconductor holders, the SMH. And you can see what I was referring to earlier in, in, in the earlier video was this lower high in here. And that has me a little bit concerned, not necessarily that we're going to pull back, but just maybe uh, consolidate in a range, which is, which would be actually uh, welcome um, from my standpoint. Um, you know, September wasn't supposed to be a good month. It turned out to be a great month. The market wasn't supposed to rally uh, until the, the big boys came back from vacation in uh, late August. But it did anyways. They said it was on light volume, but that didn't matter. It went up anyways. So we got to just listen, learn to listen to the messages of the market. And right now the semis are telling us maybe a little bit more caution is warranted than what they might be telling you on television with this uh, obsession with the new highs. We were looking yesterday for the semiconductors to get above 3450. That level failed today. So that leads me to believe that we might get a little bit of uh, consolidation. And as I had mentioned on the queues, we have our first signs of distribution in here as well in the five-minute a time frame where we've got these moving averages crisscrossing. So we're going to continue to treat it as always um, like it is a uh, market of stocks and a stock picking environment. Here's the legal junk that uh, I put up there so people don't send me hate mail and that sort of thing. So go ahead and read that. And um, while you read that, uh, that's going to do it. Good enough. Um, that says you won't sue me if you lose money, that these ideas become your own once you decide to press the button. Hold no one responsible but yourself for your ideas. Where you find your ideas is anyone. I don't expect you to send me a check for your pro for part of your profits, and I don't expect to hear you griping if you lose money. So here's Flextronics, symbol F-L-E-X. And Flextronics had a nice day here. You can see on the daily time frame, it's up near highs for this period that we're looking at, which is, it happens to be 150 days or so. On the weekly time frame, it looks like the stock can head up towards about $14 a share. So when we drill down now to a 10-minute, a time frame. Here's what I want to see happen. What I'd like to do uh, would be to see the stock rally back up above some short-term resistance right here at $12.95. Above $12.95 is where I'll probably be looking to buy the stock. And then I would put my stop uh, maybe below this green moving average here, which is $0.66. Cents. So uh, put my stop at uh, 12 65 So in other words, we're risking about $0.30. Cents. And if it makes it up to a target of $14 a share, that will give us upward potential of $1.05, which uh, is worth uh, uh, risking $0.30 cents for, in my opinion. Um, there's the weekly time frame again in FLEX. HOKU, I have no idea what this company is, some kind of scientific company, I guess, based on their name, Hoku Scientific. But Hoku Scientific has a nice volume pattern in here recently. Up on big volume here, consolidated for a couple of days, and then another push. Now we've got the stock's been consolidating. That 10 crossed through the 20, but now it's crossing back up. We saw good volume three days ago, and then a little bit more consolidation. Now I think here on a 10-minute time frame, it's been holding this five-minute um, five five day rather moving average, and I think that getting the stock back above four dollars and twenty cents, or trading at four twenty, you can see this high here is four nineteen. So if it trades four dollars and twenty cents, I'm in the stock. That's that's what I'm going to do tomorrow, and I'm going to put my stop below the five day moving average. You want to be a little bit more conservative, you could say maybe at four oh two. Let's say our stop goes at four oh two in this stock, and then what I'd be looking for as far as the upside goes is a test of the, this level, I'm sorry, right here, about $5 a share, 490 is actually what that level is. You can see in the weekly time frame uh, that it's a nice pattern. So looking for about $4.90, so maybe $0.70 cents of upside for a risk of what appears to me uh, to be about $0.20 cents or so. Next up, we've got a company that I bought calls in today. I bought the October 17 and a half calls in this company, so I do have a position. Um, that's Perigo, 
PRGO is the name, uh, PRGO is the symbol rather, and you can see we're seeing nice big volume uh, on the on the up moves and low volume consolidations. Today had a, a nice day, and daily time frame obviously looks good, but when you look at the weekly time frame, we've got a very nice pattern in here as well, where it looks like the stock is about to break out to multi-year highs. If it can make it past here, I'm looking for the stock to move up to about 18 and a half, maybe 18 and a quarter is what we could say, just to be a little bit more conservative. So we'll make our target $18.20. I think you can buy the stock. Probably the best way to buy the equity is above this high here. So above 1708, I think that's where you want to buy the stock. Your stop should probably go right underneath this area right here, about 1860, uh, 1686. Sorry for the dyslexia there. Um, but $16.86 is where I'd set a stop. So we're looking at maybe what's that, uh, 30 cents or so of uh, potential risk and again looking for about a dollar 20 of upside if it, you know about a dollar 10 or so uh, that is up to the about the $18.20 level and last one we're going to look at on the long side is XM satellite radio symbol XMSR and here the stock's been putting in a pretty nice little base in here it's nice to see that we've got the 10-day moving average back above the 20 which is above the 50 and they're all rising you can see the 50-day moving average here is just starting to rise so it's telling me the longer term trend here is starting to move higher now this is going to become my price objective fifteen dollars a share that's what I'm looking for in XM satellite if it can do what I want it to do on the uh, uh, short term time frame which is this the stock had a nice little shakeout in here today so that's good to see good to be not be in it while that happened because I probably would have been uh, shaken out of it but it did get that so what I think I, I don't have a position here but what I'm looking to do tomorrow is to probably buy it above thirteen dollars and sixty six cents this high right here above thirteen dollars and sixty six cents that's where I want to buy the stock I think it has the potential to make it up to about that uh, uh, fifteen dollar level uh, this stock can get going pretty good when it gets going. I think your stop goes below the five-day moving average. Let's put it a little bit lower than that. Let's say $13.48. So that would give us a risk of $0.18. Uh, and, you know, the, the stock uh, looks like, like I said, I could get up to about that $15 level. It's uh, been bottoming for a while, broke this little trend line, now maybe getting ready to go. There's your, your look at the weekly time frame. I'm not talking very good tonight. Uh, Chaparral, Chaparral Steel, C-H-A-P. Here on the weekly time frame, obviously it looks like it's in an uptrend. When we look at the daily time frame, though, I, you know, I'm looking here at what looks to be a failed breakout. And from failed moves, often come fast moves. Now, the stock broke down on this heavy volume two days ago. And then we started to see lighter volume the last two days. Now, what I want to see here in this stock is I want to see it break below. Um, let's take a look at this two-minute time frame, get a little bit better view in there. But you can see intraday that it had a little bit of support at about 33.90. So below 33.90, I'd like to sell the stock short. I think then that our stop ought to go right about above this high right here. And this is $34.22. So below uh, $33.90, we're going to risk $0.32 cents a share. And I think that the stock looks like it ought to probably drop down towards about this level in here. Just a retest of this area, which is about $32.70. So Chaparral Steel on the short side, C-H-A-P. We're looking to sell the stock short on weakness. Uh, next, we have uh, form factor, symbol F-O-R-M. And form, kind of the same thing. We've got lower highs and lower lows. Um, I kind of drew that in backwards, but we've got lower highs and lower lows on the daily time frame. Looks like the volume comes in as the stock is declining and rallies back up on diminishing volume. So a, a weak te technical picture here. Looks like another stock that we probably want to sell short on weakness. You can see it's struggling with this five-day moving average in here. And below uh, these lows in here, below uh, $42 a share, before below $42 a share, we want to sell this stock short. Uh, I would then set a stop right up above here, about $42.40. So risking about $0.42 cents a share on form factor. And it looks like the stock probably ought to drop down to at least test these lows. So maybe 40 and a half, let's call it. Uh, maybe looking for about a dollar and a half of potential 
uh, price uh, appreciation for our short and risking about 30 cents. That's going to do it. Thanks for your time and uh, talk to you tomorrow.